Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Now, this week we're going to be working on the big horizontal. You've seen that I got it in here on last week's video, and I've been working on it a couple days now, and I've made some pretty good progress. I've found a few things wrong with it. I'm going to share those with you. Uh, one of them I did, uh, or I broke, and uh, another one's probably been broken for years. I'll share all that with you. I'll probably try to remove the big vertical head on it and get the horizontal rams functioning in and out the way that they should. And we got a lot to talk about. Uh, this machine has got a lot going on. We're going to work on the box on the side that either drives a rotary table or a dividing head and we'll clean the table up and who knows. So let's go in here and get started. I guess so I've made pretty good progress on this thing and uh, I've been working on it a lot this morning but uh, I didn't get to film a lot because it was pouring rain. I mean this is a tin roof and it was so loud you wouldn't have been able to hear me so I did a little bit without you. Alright guys there's a look outside of the shop and uh, you can see man it is pouring out there. And this tin roof doesn't help the noise level, that's for sure. I got a tin roof on my house also, so it's noisy in there. But uh, not too bad. You see the creek is rolling, and it just keeps coming up. Uh, it's been raining not this hard since I got up. It's just now getting good and light. But, uh, you know, it's picked up pretty good, and that creek just keeps rising. So we'll see how, how high it gets. But uh, it gets pretty wild at times. Some of you guys have seen it. Now, I've made pretty good progress, I think. I put plastic down because everything I pull off this is falling on the floor, and I don't want to track that into the concrete. So I think that's a good idea. Now, most of the stuff that I've been doing is just wiping all the grease and, you know, and oil off this thing, cleaning it up to get it to at least get it to a point where if I brush up against it lightly, I don't get covered in grease because uh, you know that's pretty common for a lot of old machines that be covered and it's the stuff is hard to get off it really you have to put some work into it I've been using WD-40 I usually buy I'm not a huge fan of it for lubricating you know, and stuff but for cleaning and stuff like that keeping stuff from rusting it does okay been using it I buy it by the gallon uh, been using uh, Carburetor cleaner, which is really aggressive, so it's not something you really want to use on painted surfaces, but it'll cut the grease, that's for sure. And this stuff used to be 79 cents a can. Now it's two dollars and some. At least where I'm located, and that's if you're not good at math, that's more than double the cost that it used to be. But it goes a long way if you uh, you know use it uh, sparingly. And I've been using um, uh, the uh, engine degreaser. I just spray that stuff on and let it set. It just softens the grease where it wipes off a lot better and it doesn't hurt the paint. So on painted surfaces this is what I use. This and WD-40. But I'm going to show you what I've done so far and uh, give you a good look at the machine. Like I said we'll try to probably pull off this uh, vertical head. I've never had it off of course and I want to get the rams working the way that they should. Another thing that I did was clean off the foot of this machine, but I've yet to clean out the sump. Um, I would guess that there's probably five gallons of, you're probably not going to be able to see it, but I'll show you, I'll get you a shot of it. There's probably five gallons of grease, oil, water, leaves, chips, and probably a half inch of goo in the bottom, and that's not going to be fun to clean out. But it has to be done, so we may try that too. First, let me show you what I've done, and then we'll start pulling off this big vertical head. I want to make sure I got all the parts. Seems like uh, Keith Benner, Keith Rucker, you know, they didn't have the parts for theirs. Hopefully, all the parts are in this one. Here's a little look inside of the sump. Man, these brass, this machine has brass screens on everything. I'm missing a few up top, 
but I do have some aluminum plate with this exact same hole size and pattern so I'll probably be replacing those with the aluminum but anyway look at that mostly water and goop so uh, that's not gonna be not gonna be fun I don't think most people would I don't know some of you guys would probably have your elbow up in it but <laughs> I will too but uh, not a fun job, but it has to be done. This thing has a drain on the back, but it's so close to the ground, I'm gonna think I'm gonna try to you know, pull this out with a vacuum pump. All right, so you can see I've started cleaning up this dial, and it's pretty good. Uh, you use an Allen wrench to, uh, you know, loosen them and uh, set them. I'll probably end up making a, you know, a little thumb screw for it. You don't need much leverage. I mean, that's plenty. So it's just a little lever to where I can loosen them and uh, set them without having to have an extra tool. And what I've used to clean them up so far, just a piece of copper. Now this copper is softer, of course, than the, the steel on the get there, on the dial itself, so I mean, it's slow, but that's what I've been doing. Just, uh, you know, using that to, uh, to get all the paint off. See? And then this knurling's kind of hard to clean out. Now, to clean it out, I've been using a little uh, little brush, but I don't want to, you know, scuff these dials up any more than they are. But for this knurling, uh, a little brush not gonna hurt anything. But that's the deal. That's what I've been doing. Uh, I've got uh, almost all of them cleaned up, and uh, they're looking pretty good. All right, so I got these cleaned up relatively well. The uh, the dials. And, uh, you know, they're old dials. They'll never clean up like new, but I think they actually uh, you know, look pretty good. I used a little uh, metal polish on them also just to clean them up. These two levers here are your uh, feeds. or not your feeds, but your uh, directional control uh, for your power feeds. And uh, pretty neat design. You can see that this freely rotates. This is your X axis up and down to the knee. And in order... If this was engaged and you was to be able to move this lever, man, this thing would eat you up if it rotated around and got you. So you have to be able, you have to pull out the handle in order to uh, put it into uh, power feed. I thought, the, you know, that's pretty nice. Same with this uh, handle here. Push it in to use it, or reverse it, or pull it out to power feed. Also found something pretty neat. Uh, it says down and up right here, and it's got a little arrow. So it just took. You know, it's probably pretty obvious to most people uh, which way you turn the handle, but, you know, just as a reminder, uh, it's got up or down and up and an arrow, and then over here, now all this was under the under the paint, so I just found this uh, uh, yesterday, and it says out and in on your, uh, um, your y-axis, so I'm going to clean the paint off this and maybe, uh, you know, highlight these letters and stuff on down the road but pretty neat the detail that they put in you know the castings on these things all right guys so i got you down here on the side of the knee of this machine and it's looking a lot better still got a long way to go before it's you know really cleaned up but a rough cleaning i've done and it's starting to look pretty good i think now in my reveal video that i've done I had said that these side controls were an option, or at least I thought they were, but uh, I had read uh, yesterday on Practical Machinist where these side controls come standard on the K models. Now that's just what I read, and a lot of this is just my assumption, so double check everything I say, but this is what I believe. So neat to have nonetheless. Uh, this is your rapid traverse, so you can stand back here mess with your power feeds, rapid traverse, and work your hand control on your table all from the side here. So if you're doing, you know, uh, work where you need a different angle uh, view, you know, you can work from over here. This machine also has automatic stops. These are your uh, automatic stops for your uh, y-axis. And uh, these are your Z uh, stops for your knee up and down. Here's the pause for them. And then, of course, it has it on the front of the table uh, for your uh, X axis. This is the lock for the knee, or for your Y axis lock, I believe. Now, somebody has made this handle. It did not come original uh, aluminum. Uh, so I'm 
I'm in the... I mean, I need one of those, I think. I don't necessarily care for that. And uh, I'd like to have this handle here. So if anybody has uh, access to one of those or, you know, prints or something, I would like to have that handle to, to, to take advantage of these controls. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the lock for your knee up and down. And, uh, man, having that uh, back in the 40s, these automatic stops must have been really nice. Uh, pretty advanced machine, in my opinion, for when it was built. Uh, it's built like a tank. Yeah. Let me show you uh, something that I broke and then something that's been broke for probably a long time. All right, so I did a goof move here and uh, broke the handle off. You know, this thing made it for 70-something years, and then I come around and break it off. But uh, the problem was, now, I attempted, I was going to fix it, but I decided against it because it's all beat up. What it was is this thing was bent. The handle was already bent, and it felt crazy cranking this thing with a bent handle, kind of like riding a bicycle with a bent pedal. You know, it just feels crazy. And I was like, well, I'll take a rubber hammer, I'll hold this good, and I'll just tap it straight. Well, it didn't take two taps, and this thing broke right off. So. It wasn't far from broke, but uh, what I've done is got to the, the, the Bible here of machine tools and uh, items needed and my master catalog. And I've looked up the handle and it looks like I can get one. Looks basically the same and they are about 18 bucks. So not too expensive. So I'm gonna have to pull this off drill this out, press in a new handle, and I've also got a problem here, what I believe is a problem. Now this is your uh, power feed and you know uh, in your Y or in your X axis, but there's like a really fine line here, you know, when you engage it, it disengages the handle, and it does it in both directions, but when you go to disengage it, you got to kind of something sticky or something because it's it's really a fine line between disengaged and engaged so it feels like something's either war in there or uh, or just out of out of adjustment so I'll have to see how it does it'll work if you get it in the right spot but it's a problem so problem number one now let me show you the other problem that I got down here at the motor, just open this, man, that's a heck of a door. It's quarter inch thick cast iron, man, that would be sheet metal these days. We have a motor mount issue, so let me bring you down here and show you what I found wrong with this. I just did a quick inspection and seen it. All right, so you're looking down inside the motor compartment, and this is the seven and a half horsepower motor that runs this thing. It's pretty dirty in here, it's gonna have to be cleaned up, but if you look back here, Right there, there is a broken pivot. It's got two of them, one there and then one back there that uh, this big motor plate swings on. So that's something that uh, I'll have to fix. I'm not exactly for sure how I'm going to do it, but I'll probably just pull that motor out and braise up that uh, broken eyelet. So just one more thing to add to the list, but really not that big a deal. Well, I've never obviously removed the head off this thing or any one of these before, so I don't necessarily know what to expect. I know it should come off just by loosening the two side pieces and sliding them out of the way. But from the looks of this thing, it's going to be pretty heavy, probably as heavy as a small block Chevy. Be my guess are close. Right, so I've got some wood here just in case. Uh, I don't think that this thing's going anywhere, but you never know. Uh, being as heavy as this is, I looked over all the checkpoint or the, the lift points to make sure you know they hadn't sustained any damage from anything, you know, who knows? I've got a pretty heavy cast bracket here and a big outlet, so I guess uh, 
I'm just going to barely loosen these and put some put some uh, pressure on the uh, hoist. And hopefully this thing comes off easy. And supposedly these things are should be pretty it should be pretty well balanced uh, from the lift point. Uh, I don't know what this is for. It's probably some sort of long bar when you try to put it on there. I have no clue. I've never even looked into that, but I'm assuming it's probably something like that, given you know you got to line this thing up, and there's probably a gear and some you know, cogs that it has to, or some keys that it has to line up with. Uh, as bad as I thought. The thing is heavy. Let's get a good look at it. Here's a good look. And that thing is balanced. Awesome. Still probably be a pain to get back on, but big gear there that drives the head. Feels, feels good. Big uh, gear to you know, drive the head, I guess, from the casting and it looks in really good shape and the face looks okay on this thing so we'll clean all this up and uh, we'll get a little better look at all this clean up the rams see if we can uh, get those to come out all right so i got the gear off and for anybody wondering it this wasn't just completely obvious the paper looks pretty good in this thing and your 50 taper goes in then the gear goes on, but it it actually bolts to the spindle itself, so and that is a tight fit. So you have to remove these four bolts. You know, what I did first is I just assumed to loosen the drawbar and uh, took my Shark River machine uh, brass hammer, uh, thanks Stephen Lang, uh, and I tapped on the back of the drawbar like you would tap on the top of the drawbar in a uh, you know, R8 call it in a milling machine to pop it loose. Well, I tapped a few times and I was like, man, that doesn't feel like it's going to come out. And I didn't want to, you know, didn't want to beat on it. Now I got to looking at it and these bolts are really long, so they actually bolt into the spindle itself. So take the bolts out, the gear comes off and it slides into here. So a little different from the ones that I had seen. I believe Keith Finner and Keith Rucker's uh, machines both. Uh, um, you know these were made together but I may be wrong so little uh, little uh, info there now I want to get these rams out but I'm definitely not going to try to extend those rams being as dirty as they are on the back and pull all that junk into the castings so I'm going to clean up those rams and then we'll try to move them forward making pretty good progress I'm just using a I got all the goo off all of the real high spots um, you know I'm having to go over it just with this uh, India stone just a medium and it's a good flat one this is a uh, Coleman lantern fluid Guys, so you've seen I got both of the locks out of the top. Alright, first thing I'm going to try is just a rubber hammer. Just going to tap on this guy. Hear the sound changing. There it goes. Right there. That's all it took. I uh, didn't have to use a slide hammer or anything. Throw this out and see if I can. Yeah. See how 
nasty that is. And that's a lot of that's how, you know, there's not water, it's WD-40. Where I'd sprayed these and let it soak, but that's how they're they're made. They got a little pin here. <laughs> Can't see it because the light's horrible in here. It's light in there. there you go. See that pin? And then this hole. So you could potentially use a half 13 bolt run down in there to help push on this, but uh, you know, it shouldn't take it. So I got to clean all that out and clean this up, and then hopefully these rams will move. And I cleaned them up decent. I'm not finished with them, but and I just soaked this whole rams and everything with WD-40 and Croil. And I like the Croil a lot better than the WD-40, but I have gallons of WD-40. So I soaked it and I let it set. I've stoned these rams really good. Everything that's exposed, I've stoned and cleaned, so I'm not going to push any dirt in this casting or you know big burrs that are on these because it had some, of course. And I got to looking at this and looking in the operator's manual, and I'm glad I did. I had a couple of people bring it up also, and that uh, this unit, the way that these rams move out, is not as simple as you would think. You know, you would think you turn this handle and these two rams come out. Well, it does that, but it also, if you pull this handle out, you can move just the one ram by itself. So if you was to start hammering on these before you start knowing how they operate, you could damage this rack mechanism really bad. So, you know, it pays to, to try to look into things. What may seem simple may not be. Uh, you know, I've ran into that and caused myself a lot of problems in the past, uh, you know, with that. So, I'm going to show you how I'm going to get the other one loose. I've already got the this one loose. I used a block of steel, mild steel, or quarter inch thick plate, and a sledgehammer. You know, that's about how you got to do it, or build a press, some sort of press to push on these. Now this other one, the right hand ram, is stuck solid, and I'm going to show you how I, you know, same process, how I got uh, this one loose. So I'm going to leave this handle out, uh, that way it should be disengaged from the rack, and I won't be hammered against the, the mechanism here. So I'll get set up and show you how I'm going to get it loose, and hopefully we'll get it loose on camera. Time to harness my angry farmer. <laughs> now, this steel plate here is a lot softer than these rams, so I'm not going to be hurting anything. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the back. Just moved it, I mean, maybe an eighth of an inch, if that. But if it'll move a little, it'll move a lot, just with time. And uh, every time it moves, you know, I'm wiping off any exposed rust and stuff because I don't want to push all that stuff back up in the casting. So I'm just cleaning it up and uh, moving it back and forth a little at a time. And the steel's pretty soft, so... It's not hurting anything. Somebody's hammered on these before anyway. Mm -hmm. And it has. So that's it. That's all I'm doing. A little at a time, same way I did the other one. And it's working for me. I've heard of several different methods from people, uh, you know, getting these loose. What I did first, before I tried to move them at all, is just use a propane torch. Up in the, uh, the lock holes and heated the casting. It took a little while, but it warmed up the casting enough to where I believe it expanded a little and let some of that uh, penetrating oil get in there. I mean, you know, better than no heat at all, I think. So that's all I'm doing. Hurt 
starting to yeah starting to move pretty good. Got about a half inch movement now. Now here's the side box on this table. I guess it drives either a rotary table or a, uh, a dividing head. I don't know which one this is yet. I haven't looked into it. But I just want to pull this cover off and see. I haven't taken it off yet. I did take this off. I just want to take this cover off and see what makes this thing work. I'm curious and to see what condition the stuff is under here. Uh, it's not a sealed unit, I don't think. So I don't think we'll hurt anything by taking it apart and looking at it and do it without dropping it. Everything on this machine is heavy. Mm. Okay. Uh, that's a little rough looking. It's had some water in it, I believe, at one time. And it's got a gear set in here. Oh, okay. It's engageable. Somehow. Okay. It's got a lever back here. So this will all have to be cleaned up. You know, I hate to find uh, that it's had water in it, but you know, it is what it is. It'll clean up, though. All right, so fast forward about 30, 45 minutes now. I cleaned all this out, and I learned a couple things about it. Never had one of these apart. Never used one. And it looks like this shaft here is driven by another shaft that's under the table. So I don't guess these need to be coupled in order for this to work. And uh, I don't see any handle or anything to actuate or to move this uh, gear. But I thought that was pretty neat. Got some little, uh, look like uh, little ball oilers here. And I've already hit those with oil. I uh, cleaned it all up, oiled my shaft. I did get some corrosion on this, but I don't think it's enough to hurt anything. I mean, it's you know, nothing major. But I'll probably end up having to pull this off and check the end of the, this is on the main lead screw and check that bearing probably. So pretty neat the way uh, the way that works. And man, those are heavy, heavy gears for, uh, for driving almost anything. I got the cover cleaned out really well. I uh, still need to get my little uh, caps. I need to make those, but it's pretty much uh, ready to go back together. I sprayed it with WD-40, put some oil on it. I'll have to eventually come in and put some, some grease on it. Cleaned up my cap, and I cleaned up all the hardware. So I'm going to put this guy back together and call it at least uh, good for now. I mean, I know that there's nothing damaging going on in there, and that's my main goal is just to inspect this machine, clean it, and uh, you know, learn, it, learn how it works. Get her done. Turn right machine works uh, T slot cleaner. And I'm putting it to use. Fits this machine well. And there's plenty of goo in the in the slots. Here's a neat uh, covered bridge that is uh, on my way to work. And it's a, it's a pretty place. Uh, Let's uh, go down here and get a, get a closer look at it. I 
right guys like the sign says this is the original uh, covered bridge of Kentucky and it was washed out in a flood in 1997 now I remember driving by here and this uh, bridge being completely gone and they reconstructed it in 1998 and what they did is they went downstream and they gathered all of the original timbers that wasn't damaged beyond use and they tried to reconstruct it with those timbers at least you know what they could which i thought was pretty nice and uh you know we'll take you in here and we'll get a look but i drive by this place every day on my way to work sometimes we'll come down here and fish or just uh, wade in the creek it's a nice nice place nice to have near near the house just like every you know landmark or something that's not manned 24 7. everybody's got to put their their mark on it and this, this is no different but uh, it's still a nice place it would just be you know a little nicer if uh, people didn't spray paint on everything here's one of the original timbers that was used in the, in the original bridge before it washed out there's several throughout the bridge but you can tell you know if you can see it beyond the uh, graffiti uh, most of this is new timber but there's quite a few of the, you know, the old old timber still left here. Here's the bridge that uh, replaced the covered bridge. Or one of them anyway. Well, I think that I've got it. That's the left ram. And that one's, other one's moving. So I'm just going to push it out and clean it. There it goes. Here's a, a look at the, the ram. You know, I've just wiped the goo off of it, that's all. Um, and to clean it up, I'm going to do the same thing I did on the outside. The elbow grease. And a good, good stun. Don't look too bad, you know. So it could be worse. I've seen them completely rusted before. That's what happens when a machine sets outside or somebody pressure washes one. And then lets it set. One time this thing got rained on or something, it got water down in the locks. And that's where a lot of the main corrosion come from. Right, so got both rams working exactly like they should. And I'm still, I still need to pull them out and clean the casting out. Now that I got them to where I can move them freely, I can take them out and clean them. But uh, for now, and operate one or both. Be happy about that. There's a lot of work to get those going. Well, guys, I think that's about it this week. And man, I'm really glad to have those rams working the way that they should. That was quite a job. What you've seen was just you know the highlights really it took two days to get those cleaned up and operational the way that they should they were stuck pretty good but not too bad but if they were real bad you'd be in big trouble you'd probably have to build some sort of you know hydraulic press or you know use a large fence post or something you know to get them moving i'm sure some of you guys have dealt with that before and uh, you know understand what uh you know what i'm telling because there's a lot of casting there that those rams are hit in and if and you just cannot access it so you got to rely on penetrating oil and you know a little force to get them loose but didn't hurt anything and i think they're in good shape so still a long way to go on this machine i guess clean out the sump flush and change oil in the main casting and in the knee and a million other things I'm working on the way wipers right now for the, the for the knee and making some new screens for the table because it has coolant through passages and you got to clean those out they're full of you know 70 years worth of gunk 
So a long way to go, but uh, I'm getting there. And maybe next week we'll pull the motor out and fix the casting. I don't know. We'll see. But I got a favor to ask of anyone that lives anywhere near me. Um, and I got some viewer mail that I want to share with you guys. So let's go in the other part of the shop. I'll show you what I got and tell you what I would like to have done. All right, guys, so I got a favor to ask of anybody who's heading through Euclid, Ohio, and coming through Kentucky or Indiana. At HGR Surplus, I have a 15-inch four-jaw chuck that I would like for either somebody to pick up and hold, or if you're heading this way, you can deliver it, and I'll give you the 15-cent shop tour. The 15, not the 5. And uh, what it, this chuck has already been paid for and everything. It's just a simple pickup. You could either pick it up and hold it, because HDR surplus will only hold stuff for 40 days, and then I think you pretty much forfeit it. Or you can uh, bring it down. You can bring it to me, or if you're heading into Indiana, you can give it to my buddy Jim Lichty, and he's in Northeast Indiana. So if you're interested and would like to hold this or transport it, you can contact me through my email. This thing's already paid for, so it's no big deal. It'd just be a simple pickup, and if you're heading down this way anyway and would like a shop tour, I'll give it to you. I just don't want to lose out on this chuck, so I'd appreciate that. And I got some viewer mail here. I had said, I think, it wasn't my last video, it was a video before last, that I did not have a machinist handbook, and you know, I didn't. But now I have three. I have one for the shop, I have one for the crapper, and I have one for work. So we'll start off with the first one I got. And the first one I got was the 16th edition. It is the thumb version, which I really like. And it is from Vernon over on, he's on YouTube also at The Mature Patriot. And uh, Vernon sent me this book. He watches the channel. And he said that on his channel, he plans to give several away. He had bought uh, eight or ten off of eBay. And uh, he put minimum bids in on a bunch and ended up winning most of them. So he wants to give them away to promote his channel and to also help upcoming and... Uh, struggling machinists like myself so i really appreciate it Vernon. and if you would like a chance to win a machinist handbook like kind of like what adam's doing uh, go over and visit vernon over at the mature patriot he's he's a really nice guy so thank you Vernon. i really appreciate it and i've got uh, the 15th edition this is the 16th i got the 15th edition this one's in a plastic uh, protective case it's been around for a while but it it's in really good shape. This come from Bill Warner in Gilbert, Arizona. And if I got that wrong, uh, correct me. But I think that come from Bill Warner. My wife went through my boxes. I always keep all my boxes that people send me stuff because I like to send them back stickers if I can when I get around to it. And I got it mixed up. But I think that come from uh, Bill Warner. And the third one here is the 26th edition. All these are the thumb version. Really nice book here. And that come from Ken, and he's just some old guy out in Marina, California. It's his words, not mine. Uh, he sent a really nice letter and said he enjoys the channel and stuff and just wanted to uh, send this book my way. And I really appreciate it, and uh, I will definitely put them to you. So I don't need any more machinist handbooks, you guys. Um, and I got a friend that said, a reviewer that said he was going to send me a black book. So I think that my bases are covered as far as machinist handbooks and stuff. So I really appreciate it. So as far as the channel goes, you know, I think we're doing pretty good, but I believe that I'm going to start doing shorter videos from now on. Um, you know, probably half the length of what I'm currently doing. But I'll probably end up doing more. We'll see how it works out, but I'm gonna shorten them up a bit. They'll just be easier to watch. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll get out more videos that way. So, thanks for watching, guys. Any questions or comments, just feel free to email me. If you want to move that check for me, that'd be greatly appreciated. Just contact me and we'll work it out. It's, it would be simple. So, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.